Um, on the one hand, I'm hearing this technology is dangerous because it causes things that even aren't immediately evident, like DNA breaks mm-hmm. and enzymes and, and, and mm-hmm. sperm count and, and the hormonal balance and stuff like that. So on mm-hmm. the one hand, we're saying this technology is dangerous. Then on the other hand, we're saying, well, you don't have to completely get rid of it. Just, you know, cut it back to what you need and see if your health improves. And so I'm kind of left going, well, either it is or it isn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, it's well, not like, it's not like, and I know, okay, so let's take the smoking analogy. You can mm-hmm. say, look, we have decided as a, as a, you know, culture, country, that cigarette smoke is carcinogenic, it's dangerous to your health. Yet at the same time, we acknowledge that not everybody that smokes gets cancer. Not okay. everybody that lives in a secondhand smoke environment gets cancer. So are you saying it's similar to that type of thing where there is always going to be the exception to the rule, but for the majority of people, we can say that this is bad for your health. You should basically get rid of it um, as, to, as to whatever limits within your power. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is similar to smoking, and you're correct when you say that some of the damage you can't see. If it's damaging your DNA, that might show up, you know, 10, 15 years down the road. So you're correct about that. What I, what I was referring to are people who are symptomatic, which means uh, they go into a room, uh, there's a cordless phone there, and they develop a headache within a matter of a few minutes. They don't have a choice. They can't be in that room. Right. Uh, you know, without having a headache. And the headache could be very severe. It could be totally debilitating. So their choice is taken away from them as to whether or not they can be exposed to this radiation. However, if those individuals who react very strongly and have these symptoms, if they eliminate the exposure or minimize it as much as they possibly can and then begin to build up their immune system and begin to detoxify, eventually they'll be able to go into that room with that cordless phone there and they'll be able to be in there for a couple of hours without developing a headache rather than developing it right away. Do you see what I'm saying? So your symptoms your, your symptoms will actually go away because your body is able to fight it better. When you're, when you're totally depleted of everything, you know, a little flu comes along and instead of you staying in bed for... Uh, a week, you're in bed, you're sick for months. Your body can't fight it. And so what we're, what we're finding is that your body can eventually fight it if you build up your immune system and minimize your exposure. Okay, so, so then bringing it back to the practical. I'm a natural health writer. My kids have been fed organic, unprocessed food from birth, probiotics, vitamin D, you name it, they've had it. Fish oils, everything. Okay, mm-hmm. you can't find... You'd be hard-pressed to find healthier kids. They are extremely physically active, completely developed musculature, very high cardio. So I'm looking at them and I'm going, okay, so from birth, they've had everything that you're supposed to do. Like their Mm -hmm. immune systems, they have not been vaccinated. They are operating at the highest level of health that is probably possible within a modern, modernized Mm -hmm. world. Do I need to be worried about them being in school in a school with Wi-Fi, or do I say, well, because I'm doing all this on the back end, they will be okay because their bodies will be able to repair the damage, their bodies will have good detoxification systems, or should I still be going, but that is an added stressor, I don't know the consequences, I should take them out. Okay, um, I would agree that your children are probably able to withstand the stress without having damage to their system compared with some child who um, is brought up on junk food, you know, doesn't get a good night's sleep, um, doesn't exercise, sits in front of the boob tube all, all the time. My, my, I would hazard a guess that your kids would probably in a, be in a much better uh, condition to, with toler- to withstand the stress or tolerate the stress. However, we don't know what the long-term consequences are. Wi-Fi exposure to or microwave exposure of young children has just started in this generation. Yeah. You know, when I was young, I wasn't exposed, and um, and I, you know, one of the things I was told is that you know this generation uh, might be the first where the parents outlive the kids because of all the toxins we have in the environment, including the microwave radiation. That's a very disturbing concept. Since we don't know what the long-term consequences of even the slow-level exposure is, I think, you know, I would prefer to to err on the side of caution. If I were a school principal, I wouldn't tolerate this, even if Health Canada, 
you know, um, said it was safe. If I, if I thought the kids would be harmed by this, I simply wouldn't tolerate it in my school environment. And I would just wish more principals and, and school superintendents had that perspective rather than blindly believing in authority figures like Health Canada. But because they're saying they don't, they're saying they don't have the power. Oh, they do. As a matter of fact, in Ontario, quite recently, um, there's been a lot of of news on this recently in Ontario, and and one of the things the Board of Education said, it's up to the individual schools uh, to decide how they want to go. So basically, they're passing the buck. They're saying, we're not going to make the decision for you. You decide. And Mm -hmm. that's what I find. Everyone is passing the buck. And at some stage, you've got to say the buck stops here, and I'm going to take this into, you know, I'm going to take responsibility for the lives and the health of my children or the children in my school or the, you know, the children in, in, you know, this community. And then you do what you believe is right in order to, to live up to that. Mm-hmm.